Tricuspid atresia is one of the cyanotic congenital heart diseases, cardiac malformations that cause right to left shunting and mixed oxygenation blood to be pumped out of the heart into the systemic circulation, causing early cyanosis. The condition is marked by the complete lack of formation or agenesis of the tricuspid valve, which normally connects the right atrium to the right ventricle, allowing blood to pass between the two chambers of the right heart. However, if you are something like me, maybe the first time you heard about tricuspid atresia, you thought, well, so you have no tricuspid valve, so you have nothing to prevent blood from backflowing from the right ventricle to the right atrium during ventricular systole. Well, that's kind of a severe tricuspid regurgitation. That's not good, but I can't really see how it's cyanotic. But that would be actually missing the point, because as I quickly found out, tricuspid atresia does not mean that there is no tricuspid valve and that there is a hole in its place. Tricuspid atresia means that there is no tricuspid valve and that there is a wall in its place. In fact, tricuspid atresia is more a like tricuspid stenosis, much like a more severe case of tricuspid stenosis, let's say. If the tricuspid leaflets fuse partially, you may develop tricuspid stenosis. However, if there is complete fusion of the developing valve leaflets, you will develop tricuspid atresia as the fused leaflets completely block the right atrial outflow. Because the heart, contrary to, for example, your house, grows inside out, pretty much, when you fail to get your window, you don't just get a hole where the window was supposed to be. Rather, you just get the unaltered wall with no hole at all. So, as I found out in med school, tricuspid atresia is a cyanotic heart disease because there is no communication between the right atrium and the right ventricle. There is no tricuspid valve and there is no hole, there is just a wall, which means that the only way for the blood draining from the vena cava into the right atrium to reach the right ventricle and be pumped into the pulmonary trunk is by going all the way around first into the left atrium through an atrial septal defect, then getting mixed up with the oxygenated blood coming from the lungs into the left atrium, being pumped along with it to the left ventricle, and then before being pumped into the aorta, having some of that volume go through a ventricular septal defect into the right ventricle to be pumped into the pulmonary trunk. So we have three key points here. First, there is no connection between the right atrium and the right ventricle, so blood has to go around. Second, since blood has to pass through the left ventricle, both in systemic and pulmonary circulation, the presence of an atrial septal defect or a large patent for aminovalid and a ventricular septal defect, both is paramount. Without both septal defects, there is no way for the condition to be viable postnatally. And third, since we have deoxygenated blood coming from the body and oxygenated blood coming from the lungs, sharing the same heart chambers in the left atrium and the left ventricle, we will get blood mixing and a mixed oxygen saturation blood will be pumped both into the aorta and into the pulmonary trunk. For the lungs, this just means a decrease in efficiency, since the blood arriving is not completely deoxygenated and so gains less from going through the alveoli. However, for the systemic circulation, this means that blood going into the aorta is not completely oxygenated and will lead to some degree of hypoxemia or insufficient oxygen throughout the body. 
This is the cause of cyanosis, and the reason tricuspid atresia is classified as a cyanotic congenital heart disease. Additionally, since blood from the right heart is going through the left heart before coming back into the right ventricle, you can guess that pretty much a large portion of it will just end being pumped into the aorta rather than reaching the right ventricle. Some portion of the blood that should be going through the right heart will just end up being pumped into the aorta. So less blood than we would expect will reach the right ventricle, and less blood than we would expect will be pumped into the pulmonary trunk. So you can see that the pulmonary blood flow will be decreased, and this is why tricuspid atresia is classified as a cyanotic congenital heart disease with decreased pulmonary blood flow. However, tricuspid atresia can also present with increased blood flow in the absence of pulmonary stenosis. Decreased pulmonary blood flow is worse and more likely if there is some degree of pulmonary stenosis associated with tricuspid atresia. This is not uncommon since 15 to 20% of tricuspid atresia cases are associated with other cardiovascular abnormalities. The most frequent of which is another condition we've also discussed, transposition of the great vessels. In fact, one of the main classifications for tricuspid atresia is based on the presence of transposition of the great vessels. In type 1, the great arteries are normal. In type 2, the great arteries are dextrotransposed. In type 3, the great arteries are levotransposed. And type 4, associated with persistent trunkous arteriosis. Then it can also be classified according to the pulmonary valve. It can be of subgroup A with pulmonary atresia, subgroup B with pulmonary stenosis or hypoplasia, and subgroup C with no pulmonary stenosis. So we could have, for example, a case of tricuspid atresia with normal great arteries, a type 1, associated with pulmonary stenosis. So it would be a type 1b, for example. Because the right ventricle receives a much reduced blood volume throughout all embryology, it will usually fail to develop completely, resulting in a hypoplastic right ventricle, another hallmark of tricuspid atresia. Meanwhile, the left ventricle, having to accommodate double the normal blood flow, both from the right and left circulations, may find itself with volume overload and potentially long-term left heart failure. The incidence of tricuspid atresia is estimated at 10 per 100,000 live births. As with many other congenital heart diseases, the etiology of tricuspid atresia is believed to be multifactorial. There are some genes believed to be associated with it. However, the triggering environmental factors during gestation are unknown. It does not appear to show any predilection for sex or ethnicity. Prognosis without surgical treatment is poor, with a one-year survival rate of 10 to 20%, and definitive treatment is undoubtedly surgical. With surgical treatment, prognosis will depend largely on the associated comorbidities and the severity of the malformations. The differential diagnosis for tricuspid atresia includes especially other cyanotic congenital heart diseases with decreased pulmonary blood flow, such as tetralogy of fallot or pulmonary atresia. However, in the presence of increased pulmonary blood flow, its detransposition of the great arteries, total anomalous pulmonary venous return, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, and ventricular septal defects that should be considered. Diagnosis through Doppler echocardiography generally entails the visualization of enlarged heart chambers, except for a small red ventricle. In the muscular type of tricuspid atresia, a dense band can often be seen between the right atrium and the right ventricle. 
there's also the possibility that tricuspid valve leaflets form, however, fuse during development, obliterating the passage. Electrocardiography can also be highly suggestive for the condition in a neonate with cyanosis, in the presence of right atrial hypertrophy and left axis deviation. We are not going to discuss each surgical approach in detail, since it would be enough for another video and is likely to interest very few people, although if you do want a video on it, make sure to say so in the comments. But overall, the surgical care can be categorized into surgeries meant to ensure survival until the infant has enough age and weight to be submitted to larger and more corrective surgeries, and those who aim to largely bypass the right heart, such as a bidirectional gland procedure and a fountain procedure, which, in simple terms, involving diverting the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, respectively, directly to the pulmonary artery, meaning that the deoxygenated blood coming from the body will not go through the heart, rather, it will flow directly to the lung, which carries, of course, disadvantages, however, also allow it to not mix with oxygenated blood coming from the lungs. This way, at least, the condition ceases being cyanotic, since we no longer have blood intermixing. Cardiac transplantation is almost always considered as the last resort. Thank you for watching this video. Please bear in mind that this is only meant to provide a medical review and should not be taken as medical advice. If you believe you or someone you know may have tricuspid atresia, please seek your physician. If you believe one of our patients may have tricuspid atresia, please check the latest protocols before making any decision. If you are interested in congenital heart disease, make sure to check my playlist on it, as well as medical review videos on other topics. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. And I hope to see you on the next video.